All right, so welcome to this webinar about Tonatiu. So thank you for joining this, uh, this session. So this is basically a follow-up from the Tunis uh, training session. So we will basically um, going to, to, to do uh, what we couldn't have done in Tunis. So basically the, the practical parts of uh, Tonatiu uh, of Tonatiu uh, 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 software. So in, in in Tunis, we 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 saw this exercise. So using Tonatiu, design a parabolic trough concentrator with the the following data. So it's a, it will have a 35 times of concentration, an aperture size of 3.5 meters. Receiver without glazing, uh, absorptivity of 90%, uh, uh, reflectivity of 0 0.94, and the sun shape uh, profile buoy with a CSR of 10%, so a circumsolar ratio of 10%. So the exercise was to determine the optical efficiency at normal incidence, the incidence angle modifier curves, and the concentration acceptance product. So the, the first thing was to determine um, the size of the tube because we know the concentration factor, we know the aperture size, but we don't know the size of the receiver. So let me just go here. All right, just to check everything is okay. So let's 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 do some calculations. So the concentration is so CG concentration is 35 times. And the size of aperture, let's say aperture A, is 3.5 meters, right? But the concentration is how many times the aperture is bigger than the receiver than, than the receiver area. The receiver is 2 pi r, where r is the radius of the tube, because it's a tubular receiver. So basically, the unknown here is the radius of the tube, right? So the concentration will be, uh, the radius of the tube will be A, so let me just run this. I think we did this calculation in Tunis, but I'll do it again. The radius of the receiver would be um, 3 point, uh, so A, oh, sorry, A divided by CG times 2 pi. This is the, the size of the receiver in millimeters, okay? Uh, in meters, sorry. Um, uh, so we need to adapt this on our software. Um, so now we go to Tonatiu. So I hope you installed the, the, the Tonatiu. And if you do, I'm already heavy here, but let's open it again. If you open, you should have this uh, Tonatiu examples folder, all right? So you pick up this LS3, so it's the parabolic. I made a copy just to, let's say, to play with it and change something that I want. And if I do something wrong, I can always come back to the original file. So I, I always suggest uh, my students to do the same. So if you want to test something with this parabolic dish, just create a new file, play with it. And if something wrong, if you by accident deleted it or something like that, you can always come back to the original one. So open the file and you see the parabolic trough concentrator. Now we need to calculate this at normal incidence. So we can see that the, the, the source illuminating is not perpendicular. So we go to environment, sunlight, define sunlight. There is this sun position here. Right? You see Tonatiu has azimuth degrees from north, and elevation. Elevation is the complementary angle of the zenith angle. So here um, we uh, want the normal instance, so zenith equal to zero, so elevation 90 degrees. And here we go. Now we have on the normal instance. We can see that the parabolic is tracking the sun, because if you open here, this is the, the nodes that characterizes the collector. 
concentrator and the tube, we have this tracker one axis. For this calculation, and in particular for the, uh, for the uh, acceptance angle, we want the track the, the, the collector to be uh, to be uh, left uh, with no tracking because we want to, to, to check the tolerances of the collector. So the tolerances is if I move so the, the sun is moving on the sky, how tolerant my collector is to the apparent motion of the sun in the sky. This will define the acceptance angle. So for, for this exercise, okay, only for the, this exercise, we will remove the tracker. You go. But first, you need to put it on the normal instance, just like I did. Now we need to uh, change the the size of the, the of the tube. Remember, so, so the concentrator has here you go concentration geometry. You can see uh, the focus of the of the of the tube. And we can see the minimum and the maximum. So this one minus this one gives the total aperture, right? So the total aperture in this case is 3.5. 3.5 divided by 2 is 1.75. So here we, point, we put 1 min minus 1.75. And here, 1.75. Here we go. So it's a small, it's a small parabolic trough. Okay. Probably this parabolic trough isn't very realistic, but anyway, it's just a way to show you that you can change the dimensions. Right. The focus of the tube is is the same. This is 1.74. So it basically it changed the the rim angle. See this angle from the tube to the edge of the parabolic trough. We also need to change the tube, right? So the tube geometry. Remember the radius 0 0.035, but according to our calculation, now it's this value. So this should correspond to a parabolic trough with 3.5 meters of, of aperture and a total concentration factor, geometry, uh, geometric concentration of 35 times. Okay, what we need to do? Of course, as you can imagine, there are multiple things that you can do in Tonatiu, but I'm just showing you the basic things and aiming to the, this exercise. So uh, what can we do now? According to our exercise, let me come back. We need to put the materials, you see, absorptivity, of course, it's on the tube. And the reflectivity, it's of course on the on the on the mirror. 0 0.94, 0 0.9. So let's come back to Tonatiu. Let's come back to Tonatiu. And you can see concentrated material. Here you can see reflectivity. I'm, I'm putting like this. M reflectivity. One. So now it's an ideal uh, ideal uh, uh, mirror. Of course, this doesn't exist. Let's put it 0, 0 0.94. Same for the two material, reflectivity zero, of, so that means uh, absorptivity one, an ideal two. That of course doesn't exist, so let's put 0 0.9. Okay, the other things are not so important for our purposes now. Of course, we can we can uh, we can put other uh, uh, parameters to for a more uh, uh, for a more realistic uh, calculation, but for our purposes, it's enough. Let's start for the from the most simple things. In future training sessions, we can perhaps explore more advanced advanced concepts. So now, remember, we need also to put the sun shape profile. It's a Bui distribution, considered to be the best approach to the solar uh, angle profile with a circumsolar ratio of 10%. So let's come back. What, where can we put that? You go again to environment, sunlight, Define sunlight. And you can see we have the sun shape. We have the buoy, which I've shown you in the in the in the webinar, uh, in the in the training session in Tunis. It's the most uh, basic and primitive, but there is also the buoy distribution. So it's 10%, so 0 
1. So we are considering that the, the total power eating the system, uh, the, the source, the irradiance of the source is 1000 watt per square meter. You can change this, but it's a typical figure, and you can leave it as it is. All right. So now what to do? We are more or less done, more or less done, because now we have the we adapted the concentrator, the geometric uh, uh, parameters. Uh, I mean, we adapted the materials. And we adapted the sun shape profile. So this is the basic thing that you need to do in Tonatio. The geometric parameters, the material parameters, and the sun shape parameters. Once you have that, you have the basic to do some calculations. So we want to determine the optical efficiency at normal instance. So let's do that. How can we do that? We, we just come back and we are already on normal instance, remember? So how to, to ray trace? So let's just recall sun position. We are at normal instance, elevation 90 degrees, right? So how to, how to ray trace? You go here, ray trace. You have the ray trace options. Here in this case, we have 10,000 rays. Of course, the more rays, the better. But of course, if you put more and more rays, the, the, the computation starts to be slower and slower. I'll just put 100 rays just to show you one thing. So let's apply. The rest of the thing you can leave it as it is, no problem. And now let's ray trace. You go to run. And here you have two types. Either you are going to save the files or you don't. I always suggest to my students to first and foremost do this thing not export in this way you can test you can do a preliminary test just to see if everything is working so i'll show you what happens you go okay you can leave everything as it is and here we go we are uh, ray tracing with 100 rays and we can see that this is more or less working as we can see so we can see the rays are reflecting going to the tube some rays are uh, uh, are uh, as you can see are uh, not continuing. This probably means that the ray probably missed the receiver for some reason because of the material properties or the sun shape profile or something like that. But we can see the rays are clearly eating the tube, so it's working. So once you have sure that your ray tracing should be good and should be doing what it uh, uh, what it's expected to do. Then you can do with more rays. So we go again to ray trace options and we put 1000, 10,000. 10,000 it's a, it's a good figure. Uh, I'll do it with 10,000. Of course, then you can play it with that. Um, there are, of course, some uh, optimizations regarding the number, the ideal number of rays, or I should say the, the density of rays. So there is a perfect number of rays per square meter. Of course, if your collector is just too small, perhaps you don't need, let's say, if your collector is uh, 10 meters length, probably don't need as many rays if, if it would be 100 meters of length. But, uh, but okay, for these purposes, uh, I think 10,000 rays, it's enough. Now we need to export the data and then to treat it. That's why you receive the presentation regarding to install the, the Python software. I think you have, uh, you have done that. If you don't, I recommend you to do. And if you have uh, troubles with that, please let me know. Okay. So you go to Ray Trace, run, and now let's save it as binary file, always as a binary file. We need to find the directory name. I have here this folder on the desktop simulation. And I'll save it as, let's say, tests underscore zero. Okay, zero because it's the normal incidence or it's the first value. It's, it's just a, a configuration. And I'll launch 10,000 rays. You can see the density of rays has quite, quite, uh, clearly increased. Okay, so now we go to 
uh, sorry, let me just come back and go to the desktop and go to the simulation. You should have these two files, you see, tests.dat and tests parameters. Okay, so now we need to compute this, uh, this data in order to have the results. In, in order to do that, you need to use this um, this file from to from Python that I've sent before. So let's open it, edit with idle. I think you already seen this on the presentation. And so uh, the name student name is the folder. So the folder in this case is simulation. This is my uh, output. So users. So in this case, name is Duke and above. This is the, the name of the folder. If you don't know the name of the, the, the path, you can do this, what I'm going to do. Right click, go to properties, and you can see. See, it's this one. By the way, in, in this case, the slash is left side oriented, but on Python, as you can see, is right side oriented. Okay. So, and the name of the file is tests right it's test so we go to tests and we have, we have zero uh, to one so this is the range um, you need to put always one more than you have so you have test zero so you need to put from zero to one if you have test one, test zero and test test one you need to put from zero to two it's always plus one so you just need to do that. Everything, this this part of the code, you don't uh, you don't have to to worry about it, and you should run here, run F5, and okay, this sh should work. I, I hope, <laughs> and it's it. So it should end like this. Finish turn out your output, and let let me show you what happened. Let me close this. You see the two files disappear. And now we have the stats. If you open it, you have the treatment. So um, in this case, what, what do we have? We have uh, the total photons, the total power hitting the system. So 42 uh, kilowatt, okay, 42 kilowatt. Uh, and we have the light, of course, it's the source. We have the concentrated surface and we have the tube surface. You can see. Right. So what 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 we can uh, can see? Uh, um, we can see uh, the tube surface and we can see the optical efficiency. See, which is pre precisely what we want. You want to see the optical efficiency on the receiver tube. Right? As we can see, something strange is happening. Sometimes this happens, I have to admit, <laughs> I wasn't expecting this value, I have to admit, something strange happened because we have a very low optical efficiency, but this is already the treatment. So we have 42 kilowatts of power eating the system and we only have 3.6 kilowatts uh, power eating the tube. That means that if you divide this by that, you have 0 0.08. So it's a very small figure, probably something uh, strange happened. Probably I did some mistake. Uh, let me just uh, just correct because I, I was expecting, of course, a much higher efficiency. Let me just check one thing. Ah, of course. <laughs> Sorry, I did a mistake. <laughs> this sometimes this happen. Uh, you see, on the two material, I I placed the reflectivity of uh, ninety percent. Uh, that's not what we want because Tonatiu, uh, I have to admit, it's not a perfect software. Uh, and sometimes, as some things of Tonatiu are quite strange, they could have put it, uh, the reflectivity and the absorptivity, but they decided just to work with the reflectivity. Uh, so the one minus the reflectivity is the, the absorptivity. So here, I, I said in the presentation, we want an uh, absorptivity of 90%, correct? So the reflectivity should be 0.1. So I missed here. It's it's not 0.9, it's 0.1. That's why we have a, such a low low uh, uh, um, a low uh, optical efficiency. 
So what I'm going to do is to re repeat again. This is even okay to, to do it again, so just to, to, to check how to do. So everything is okay now. Uh, we just go ray trace, run, the same thing. We go to this simulation folder. Of course, you can choose your own folder, no problem, and send the files. Okay. Now, if you go again, this stats doesn't make no longer sense. And we have the new files. Let me run again here. Let me run again. So test zero. So we go to zero to one right? and run the module. Here we go. We have the new stats. And aha, <laughs> now it's OK. <laughs> you can see the tube surface now has an optical efficiency of 0.81, which is which is quite uh, quite logical because if you uh, if you think about it, what happens in the parabolic trough? So the light hits the mirror, right, and then it's absorbed by the by the tube. So the the optical efficiency. Let's do it here a simple calculation will be more or less 94% of reflectivity times. 90% of, of absorptivity. So 0 0.846. We have 0 0.81 because of the sun shape profile, which induces some optical errors, right? Some optical misalignments and so lowering the optical efficiency. But anyway, it's a good uh, result, 0 0.81. Probably, per, perhaps in reality, uh, these parabolic troughs have a, even slightly lower optical efficiency around 0 0.78, 0 0.79, of course, depending mainly on the material properties. So this is the first uh, result. So here, the optical efficiency. Okay. So then the incidence modifier curves, right? So in particularly the uh, acceptance angle. So what can we do? I will just uh, delete this this file is no longer needed and we need to compute this for different incidence angles so if we, if we go again here remember the fundamental law of concentration c equals to one divided by sine of theta remember the fundamental law right so since the concentration is 35 times we can calculate this theta. So theta arc sine one divided by CG. Multiply it by one hundred and eighty divided by, by pi. This is to get in, in the in degrees. Right. So if we do this calculation, ah, he says it's protected. Let's say uh, C. One point. Let me delete this. It's no longer needed. One point sixty-three degrees. So the acceptance angle of the collector is small because the concentration is high. Okay, so when you go for lower concentration factors, you have a much higher acceptance angle, right? That's why these uh, these collectors need trackers because it's uh, the acceptance angle is very short. So the sun goes from minus ninety degrees to plus ninety degrees, and you can only accept within one point sixty three. That's why these collectors track uh, the apparent motion of the sun in the sky. So one point sixty three. So Let's do this for uh, different incidence angles. So I'll do again for the normal incidence. So here, simulation, and call it test zero. Again, just to show you at normal incidence. Now we, we want to go from zero to one degree to see what happened. Okay. So instead of elevation 90 degrees is, let's say, let's go in steps of 0 0.1, let's say. 
so 89.9 it's a slight change you may perhaps thinking it won't make the difference but believe me it will make a difference okay so here and run again so now it's a new file we have to repeat this by hand sometimes can be tiring i admit there are some uh, some uh, uh, some patches made by my group perhaps i can share them with the future but i have to talk with them first so now it's test one and we have another another ray tracing now we go to different angles so let's say 89.8 and i'm just going to repeat the process now we'll speed up a little bit otherwise i'll spend too much time check sometimes we get lost the free is the five version So I'm saving uh, basically for uh, each instance angle. Uh, let me check, it's the seven, right? Yeah. So it's the seven. I think I made a mistake here. It's, it's, uh, I forgot here. This one. So test it. Let's, let's overwrite it. There we go. Probably doesn't make too much difference at this time because uh, we are already quite far away from the acceptance angle of the Otic. This Otic is, uh, is not very good and uh, we are far from it. So test 10. Okay. So in the end, we should have 10 files from 0 to 10. And let's treat them. So let's go here to the to the tonatio. Okay. So we have from 0 to 10. So let's put in 11. So one more, right? And in steps of 1. 0, 1, 2, 3. So of course, this is just a nomenclature that we define. Of course, you can put it whatever you want. You have the, the, the software, the sorry, the, the code. You can change it. But uh, I decided not to change too much because it will be simple for me to explain. So let's run the modules. Here we go. So each file was treated. And we have the stats. So let's go to, for the first one. See, 0 0.81 of uh, 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 OTIC efficiency. This is what, what we already see. So now let's see 
0.1 degrees of of uh, of uh, zenith uh, of uh, zenith angle, which means 89.9 degrees of uh, elevation angle. 0.81. So no, no big changes. Let's go a bit forward. You see, see what's happening. Look at this. So this is a uh, uh, just what? Sorry. For, for example, this test 5, ju just 0 0.5 degrees, okay, from, from normal instance. Look what happened to the optical efficiency. A slight change of the incidence angle led to the very quick drop of optical efficiency. This happens. This really happens because the collector has a high concentration, 35 times, so a low optical efficiency, uh, so a lower uh, acceptance angle. So what now we can do, I'm going to open an Excel file, okay, in order to store all of this, okay? Later I can send this, uh, this Excel file, right? So we have the optical efficiency. Here. For different is And we now need to do is to copy the results. So here is 0 0.81. Let me go to the second one. It's practically the same and left untouched. And this process goes on and on, right? So 0 0.3 almost touched. So the collector is more or less capturing the same the same amount of energy with no big changes. But here you can see already a drop 0 0.749 with just a slight change of the incidence angle, right? Mm -hmm. So the process goes on and on. And you can see here is already a big drop. Six zero point twenty nine, so it's already nearly zero. Here it's already zero. <clears throat> And now, the exercise asked for the incidence angle modifier curve. So basically, that means you're going to the EIM on the transversal component. So let me... It will be this value. So it's the optical efficiency divided by the optical efficiency at the incident uh, at the normal incidence so it's this one sorry this one divided by this one but fixed okay so it starts it in one but then it should start dropping as you can see right so this is the incidence angle modifier it always starts at one and it should end more or less at zero right so now so this is the let me just open this a little bit and push it to the to the other to the other cell. So uh, uh, incidence angle in zenith, okay? Incidence zenith angle. Incidence and zenith angle. So this is zero, zero point one, zero point two, and you should understand what I'm doing. Here we go. See? So now we also need to... So now you can plot this in function of these values. You can put this incidence uh, uh, angle modifier curve. Okay? But the exercise also asks for the concentration acceptance product. So we have the concentration 35 times, but we don't have the acceptance. The acceptance angle...
is defined where the EIM is 0 0.9. Okay, so if you go here, we can see the EIM is 1, 0 0.99, 1, 0 0.92, and then 0 0.73. So it's somewhere between 0 0.3 and 0 0.4. Um, let's put it, let's say, 0 0.35 rather simplistic approach but okay 0.35 so now please take a look at this the acceptance angle defined where the EIM is 0.9 so somewhere here in between these two okay is 0.35 but if we go back remember the ideal angle is 1.63 we should have 1 1.63 but in reality we have just 0.35 this means that the otic is not ideal. So now we can measure how no ideal the otic is. Remember, always the fundamental law. 1 divided by sine of theta. So that basically means that C multiplied by sine of theta is equal to 1. This is the cap, the, the concentration, multiplied by the sine of theta. So if we do this, if you do this calculation, the cap, this would be 35 times multiplied by the sign of this value. Yeah. Probably this is happening because of the, the degrees thing. Uh, here we go. That was what's what happening because of the the degrees and the and the and the, the and the radians. So you can see 0 0.21. If the, the the collector was ideal, this should be equal to one. However, it's 0 0.21. In reality, these optics, the best cap that they can achieve is around 0 0.31, 0 0.32. So these optics, these uh, parabolic troughs, let me go back here. So this, let me not erase. These kind of collectors are very uh, practical. They are the most common technology in CSP. However, they are far from the theoretical limits of concentration. That's why I explained to you during the Tunis session that we need to uh, boost the concentration and usually that is done by using secondary mirrors so one mirror and then another mirror around the the receiver boosting the overall concentration in reality what we're going to do because nothing in life is for free is to trade a bit this optical efficiency which is very good force for cup so basically those optics those non-imaging optics that i've explained in tuning session Usually they have more optical elements, so the, the light is more ref uh, are, is more times reflected or refracted compared to these more conventional optics such as parabolic troughs, but they increase the cap. Okay, they increase the, this angle, this overall uh, acceptance angle, which is a fundamental parameter to accommodate the, the what is defined as the as the effective source. So. To accommodate the sunshine profile, the mirror deviation, the mirror slope, the misalignments of uh, of uh, installation, uh, the wind induced deviations, and many many other factors that that disturb the, the the good behavior of the system. Okay. So basically, with this, we covered the the exercise. We did the optical efficiency at normal incidence, so which is basically this one. We covered the incidence angle modifier curve, so we just need to, to plot these two. So something like this. This won't work, or just like this. Uh, we need to... Uh -huh. Well, this one doesn't make any sense, so it's this one. So 
This is the incidence angle modifier curve on the transversal plane. If you want to do the longitudinal plane, you go to Donatio again, and here, the, the what defines the transversal or the longitudinal is the azimuth, right? So instead of 90 degrees, so now we are 90 degrees from the north-south oriented axis, so we are considering that this is aligned on the north-south oriented axis, and the, the rays are uh, crossing the, the, the collector. So on this plane, on transversal plane, if we want on the longitudinal plane, on the direction of the two, you just need to put here zero, okay? And then you do the same, more or less the same calculations, but for a wider angle, because uh, this optic has a small acceptance angle, but only on the transversal plane, because it's on the, it's, uh, this, it's, uh, uh, the, uh, the design plane of the collector on the longitudinal axis is only an extrusion of the optic. So basically you can do that, uh, but I'll focus on, on, the, on the transversal, which is the, the, the most important. The longitudinal is basically a cosine effect. So as you go 0, 10, 20, you will see a cosine effect. And we define the acceptance angle. So the angle to which the EIM is uh, around uh, is 0 0.9. So here we didn't uh, get 0 0.9. We get something in between 0 0.92, 0 0.73. And then multiply this by the concentration, uh, by the concentration uh, factor, we get the cup. So the cap tells you how good the collector is. In ideal case, should be one. In this case, is very far from one, which is a typical thing for these optics. So these focusing optics usually have a very good optical efficiency, but a poor cap. Non-imaging optics usually have lower optical efficiency, but but a much better cap. So what we do, and especially in in my work, is to combine the better, the best of two worlds. We want to have. A, focusing optics because they are very compact and more simple, but we want to boost their concentration by using non-imaging concentrators. So with this, I uh, covered the, the, the main technique. Of course, this, uh, this is uh, difficult to, to, to grasp in just, just one go. There are several things to do. That's why I'm recording this, so you can check in, in future. But of course, if you have any doubts, uh, please uh, don't hesitate to contact me. So uh, I will stop now the, the recording and uh, I will come back to you for questions and, and doubts, okay? So let me just come back. I will stop.